Hey, welcome back. I am so happy to see all of you. I take it that you survived the heat last week. <laughs> Very good. Did any of you go to Cedar Point? Now, I, I don't blame you if you didn't. I didn't either. It was just a little too hot for me. I know it's a lot of fun. And I know that if you're on the roller coasters, there's going to be a big rush of wind that'll probably cool you off. But it's the getting there, especially if you have to wait in line like we talked about last week. Oh, I can't imagine waiting in line in the heat. Nah, maybe I'm just old. I think the water park might have been a better place to be. Even this week. It's definitely summer, isn't it? It sure is. Well, one good thing about the summer is that all throughout the summer, we're getting together to talk about faith. The point of faith, which is the name of this video series that we're doing all throughout the summer. Because some people don't understand what, what the point is of faith. And I want you to know how important faith is, how much of a difference it can really make in your life, especially in some of the difficult times, but even in the good times. And we're doing it in what I think is one of the best ways possible. We're doing it right here at Cedar Point. It was a perfect combination to talk about the point of faith at Cedar Point. Well, we've changed directions today. What do you see behind me there? Yeah, big roller coaster. Do you like roller coasters? We've been talking about them. Yeah, some do, some don't. I am in the category of the people who do. In fact, I love roller coasters. Unfortunately, at my age, uh, as my dad used to say, they don't always love me. <laughs> they make me a little nauseous if I, um, if I ride a few too many of them, and I don't want to throw up. Now, I guess getting old is the roughest ride of all sometimes. <laughs> Those of you who are younger, you have no idea what that's about. But trust me when I tell you, if you like roller coasters and they don't make you want to throw up, ride as many of them as you can for as long as you can. Because eventually, you're going to be older like me. I can still ride a couple of them each time without getting too sick. And I do. I enjoy them as much as I possibly can because I really do love roller coasters. What's your favorite roller coaster? I like those too. Yep, there are so many to choose from at Cedar Point, aren't there? And for all ages. If you're older, you can jump on one of my favorites like Raptor or Gatekeeper or Maverick in the back of the park. If you're younger and you're not quite tall enough for those, you can jump on some of the other ones like uh, Woodstock Express or any of the other ones that they still have around the park. There's a lot to choose from, and even more as you get older and get a little bit taller. I think there's a wilderness run too, isn't there? Yeah, do you like that one? They're all fun. Now, there is one thing. No matter what color the roller coaster is, no matter what it looks like, no matter how the track runs, no matter how tall you have to be to ride, there's one thing that all roller coasters have in common. Did you know that? There, there is, at least as far as I know. Maybe there's some roller coasters that don't, but every one that I've ever seen, they all have one thing in common. What do you think that is? Those are good guesses, but I don't think I heard anybody say what I have in mind. One thing that I have noticed that all roller coasters have in, my, have in common is what we see right back here, that big, steep hill. You got to go up the hill, don't you? Now, I don't know if any of you are like me, but sometimes 
when I'm in the roller coaster in that ride vehicle and we're going up and up and up and let's face it is the ride up all that fast nope it gives you plenty of time to think about what's about to happen doesn't it I think they do that on purpose I think they do it so that there's anticipation well <laughs> you know what it does for me sometimes it makes my stomach do flip-flops I love roller coasters, but still sometimes on the way up that big hill, can you see that ride vehicle over there? They're on their way up. Sometimes on the way up, I get, get a little scared and, and, and I start to doubt why I'm on this roller coaster in the first place. There's something about knowing that you're going to go all the way up and then you're going to go over that hill and you're going to plunge down. I mean, look at that. That's quite a plunge. There's just that moment. And as much fun as I know I'm going to have, once we get over that hill and get down, and we start racing around with all the twists and turns and sometimes upside down and everything else, there's a moment on that hill with my stomach doing flip-flops and my head getting a little scared doubting whether or not I did the right thing by getting on this roller coaster in the first place. Sometimes I have a moment when I just want to bail. I just want to get off. If they could stop the ride right there and I could walk down those stairs, I think I might. But what would happen if I did that? I mean, even if they let me. I'd miss out, wouldn't I? The rest of the roller coaster is fun. I love it. That's why I keep going back. That's why I ride as many as I can, even when sometimes they make me feel like I'm going to throw up. I don't throw up, but it makes me feel like that, which isn't a good feeling. So why do I keep doing it? Because I have a blast. I love roller coasters. There's just that one moment on that big hill, that buildup to the plunge that's about to happen, when I can get a little scared and kind of doubt and almost want to give up. I don't know if you ever feel like this too, do you? Now, most of you are a lot more courageous than I am. Well, in life, there are also some times like that. Not, not literally on a roller coaster, of course, although life has been re uh, compared to a roller coaster at times because of all of the ups and downs that we sometimes have. But life does have sometimes those big hill build up moments when we know that there's a plunge coming. We know that something is about to happen. And even if we're looking forward to it, it can still get a little scary. That anticipation, that buildup, especially when it goes slow like that. Sometimes, sometimes we can get scared and doubt and even want to give up. Well, as everything else that we've been talking about, our faith can help us in those moments because they do come. They might take a lot of different forms. Have you ever experienced something like that? Let me give you some examples. Maybe you got a new job or you're going to a new school. There can be a buildup as we're leaving the last one and we're getting all ready. Maybe buy some new clothes for a new school or a new job, or we have to maybe get some new supplies. We might even be excited about what's coming next. But until we get over that hump, until we take that plunge, Sometimes the buildup can be a little scary because even though we know what all's going to happen, there's still a little bit that we don't know. A lot of things that could happen and it can be scary. And sometimes we can feel like we don't want to do it at all because of that scary. We might have to move at some times. And there's a lot to go in with all of that too, isn't there? Have any of you ever had to move houses? Yeah, a lot of us. There's the packing up and then the moving 
and then everything's new and you got to figure it all out if you really move to a new area you need to get the lay of the land new friends new area learning it all and that can be kind of hard even if it's exciting even if we're looking forward to it it can still be hard and on that big hill build up to when it actually happens that can be a difficult time life really can be like a roller coaster sometimes and it can be scary when we have to wait as everything builds up even when we're looking forward to it it can still be difficult and those doubts and those fears they can still come up in our hearts maybe even make our stomach do flip-flops like mine does on the hill every single time whatever it is we can rely on our faith because our faith tells us that we can trust in god we talked a little bit about that last week we were reminded through david's psalm 100 that god is that god has unfailing love for us remember that very good and there was something else that god had for us not just love but something else do you remember faithfulness faithfulness to all generations which i told you and reminded you means forever and ever and ever never giving up we can trust in god in all of that god will always come through for us and it can be a little bit easier we can rely on on that when we're going up the hill as well there's a lot that we have to face in life a lot that can have a build up like that big hill and we can trust in our faith and through and in god through all of it there's somebody else who knew all about trusting in god too it wasn't just david in the old testament there was a man named paul have you ever heard of paul he was one of Jesus's followers, not one of the 12 disciples, but he came after them and he was an important person. He didn't always believe in Jesus, but when he did, he really wanted people to know what he had come to know. The same thing that David had known. You see, Paul learned that our faith can teach us so much about how much God loves us. And Paul learned that the best thing of all about God's love is that God's love sent Jesus to be with us so that we can know that not only will God come through for us, but Jesus will come through for us as well. David wrote about this in a letter to a church in a place called Philippi. We don't have any place like that around here, do we? No, but over, over where Paul lived, long ways away from here across the ocean there was a place called philippi and he wrote a letter to the christians there it's called philippians and now it's part of our bible and the cool thing about that means that what paul wrote to the philippian christians we can read as well and just like paul was writing so that they could know all about god's love and jesus and how we could trust in that on those big hill buildups in life and how through our faith, it could be a little bit easier to go up even when we're anticipating that big plunge down, we can read that too. And we can have that same assurance. So would you like to hear what Paul wrote in this letter to the Philippians? Great, I'm gonna read it for you. We find it in the fourth chapter, verses four through seven. This is what Paul says. He says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. That sounds a lot like what David wrote last week, doesn't it? For the same reason, let me keep reading. He says, let everyone sees that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. God's peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, there's something that Paul writes in here that 
Sounds good, but isn't so easy to do. What did you think when you heard me read Paul Wright? Don't worry about anything. Do you worry about stuff? I do. I know I shouldn't, but I do. I think maybe that's why those big hill build up moments, maybe not on a roller coaster, but in life, those moves, the new job, new school, even new relationships that we might get into, new people that we meet. Sometimes, as much as we might look forward to them and even be excited about them, sometimes they can make us a little scared and kind of doubt and even sometimes want to give up and bail and get out. I think a lot of that has to do with worry, don't you? I mean, we think we know what's going to happen. We think it's going to be a fun ride. But what if it's not? What if as we're going down the hill, something goes wrong? What if, what if I didn't fasten my safety belt well enough? I know they check them. They do that so that we don't have to worry. But what if? I think that's what the, is so hard with all of those big hill build up moments. As we're going up and up and up that hill, we go up slowly and there's lots of time to think. And maybe you're like me. We think, what if this? What if that? And we don't have the answers to those what ifs, do we? We might think we know, we might even be excited about it, but what if? And then, then those what ifs cause us to worry. And that's what Paul's talking about here. He's talking about those kind of moments that we have as we're going up the hill, waiting for that plunge, waiting to go down for maybe even what we're looking forward to. But as we're going up slowly, 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 and those what ifs start to creep in, those unknowns that make us scared and sometimes make us doubt even wanting to be on the ride in the first place. That's when we can start to worry. And that's why Paul writes this. Because, you know, I think Paul knows something that I'm sure David knew, and I'll bet we all know as well. We all worry sometimes, don't we? Yeah. Is there anybody out there who can tell me that you have never worried about anything? Really? <laughs> I don't know that I believe you. I think whether we knew we were worrying or not, that worry is a very common thing for all of us. I think it's something that happens with all of us, which is why I think Paul wrote about this. You see, I think that the... Christians in Philippi worried. After all, if they didn't, why would he bother to say, don't worry? Now, there was a song out many, many years ago. Some of you who are older might remember the song. It went, don't worry, be happy. Well, okay, it was a good song. It was catchy, and apologies if you're now going to have it running through your head for the rest of the day. But Paul doesn't say, don't worry, be happy. I mean, let's face it. When we're facing those what ifs, when we're going up that hill, knowing that the plunge is about to happen, just saying, don't worry, be happy. That doesn't work for me. Does that work for you? No, I don't think it works for most people. So Paul says something else. He doesn't just say, don't worry, be happy. Paul says, don't worry. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank God for all that God has already done. That's Paul's solution to worry. That's what Paul tells us to do with all of those what ifs as we're going up the hill in those big hill build up moments. Don't worry, pray. Tell God all about it. We can even tell God what we're thinking as we're heading up those big hills on the um, roller coasters. We can definitely tell God what we're thinking if we're 
getting a little worried and having those what if moments in our heads about a new job or a new school or new relationships or having to move or anything else. Sometimes the what ifs, those big hill buildup moments, sometimes they're not stuff that we're looking forward to. Maybe, maybe we um, have to go to the doctor. Maybe we have to have an operation. Maybe something serious is going on in our life. There's all kinds of things that can happen in life. It's why oftentimes life is called a roller coaster because there are those ups and downs. And sometimes on the ups, we can worry about the downs because the downs, they can be thrilling or they can be really scary. Through it all, Paul wants us to know that because of our faith, we can pray to God. You see, faith reminds us that we can have a relationship with God, that God does love us and is faithful like we talked about last week. Because God loves us and is going to be faithful, because we know that in our faith, God will always come through for us. Paul tells us, don't worry, pray. Tell God what you need. Now, one thing that people always ask me as a pastor, I thought God knew what I needed. Why do I need to pray to God about it? That is a good question. You want a good answer? Are you ready? Here it is. The reason that we pray to God is not to tell God something. Like if I tell you something that you don't know, that's the purpose of telling you. That's not the purpose of prayer. God knows what we need. But when we tell God, then we're reminding ourselves of that unfailing love and that forever faithfulness. We're reminding ourselves that in telling God, we can trust God, that God will always come through for us. And even as we tell God, we're reminded of this because of our faith. All of those past times that God has come through for us, hopefully will come into mind. And that's what Paul means when he says, thank God for everything that God's done in the past. So when we're worrying, pray about it, tell God so that in our faith, we can remember all the things that God has done for us in the past and then thank God for those things. Because when we thank God for all the ways that God has come through for us in the past, all that God has done for us because of how much God loves us and how faithful God is, and our faith is going to remind us, even in that moment of worry, even on that big hill, in those what ifs in our brain, our faith is going to remind us that God will come through for us again. You see, if God's come through for us once, God will always come through for come true come to for us. I get so excited sometimes I get tongue tied. Faith doesn't always help with that but it always helps on these big hill moments in life. Whatever it is, we can trust in God. We can pray about it. Tell God what's on our hearts, what we're worried about. Tell God about all those what if moments, because guess what? God is bigger than all those what if moments. In fact, here's the best way to answer those what ifs in life. Are you ready? We're heading up. What if I didn't buckle my seatbelt well enough and it fails as we're going over the hill? God will be there for me. God is faithful and God will take care of me because God loves me. What if I get scared on the way down? God will be there for me. God has promised to never leave my side. And Jesus has as well. And God will put God's peace in my heart. That's the other thing that Paul tells us. When we have those what ifs and we're starting to worry, when we pray to God, we can answer every what if with God. God loves, God is faithful, God will come through. What if this, God? What if that, God? Our faith reminds us that we can trust that God will come through for us. God will do what's perfect for us. Our faith will remind us that God loves us so much that Jesus came 
to do for us what we couldn't even do for ourselves, to make heaven and eternity possible for us, forgiveness and all of the other blessings that we can look forward to in our relationship with God. That's what faith tells us. Faith reminds us that just as God has promised to never leave us, Jesus has promised us the same thing. The same Jesus who walked in this world, who healed people, who multiplied loaves and fishes and cared for people in a very real way, Jesus is with us. And just as he encouraged people in this world, he will encourage us. We have to reach out. We have to pray. We have to tell Jesus and God what we need. And then we'll be reminded in faith that both of them will be faithful, that both of them are with us and for us, that they've never left us. So the next time you're getting into that worry, those what if moments, those big hill times when the anticipation is building up. And even though we were excited at one point, our stomach is starting to do those flip flops. Remember what Paul says, don't worry, pray, tell God what you need. Thank God for all that God has done in the past. Remember that Jesus has promised to always be with us, that Jesus is sitting right next to us, whether we're up here on the hill, getting ready to go over that plunge on the big roller coaster, or whether we're on the roller coaster of life, we're going through those ups and downs. Jesus is right there with us, encouraging us, maybe offering us a little bit of peace in our hearts as we get worried and kind of anxious about stuff. That's how much God loves us. And guess what? Jesus loves us that much too. Because Jesus is God's son. How, do, how can we know that all of this is true? How can we count on all of it without fail? Faith. It all comes down to faith. Faith is our reminder that all of this is true, even when we can't see it, even sometimes when we don't feel it. Faith reminds us that the Bible, that God and Jesus, that it's all true. We can count on it just as we can count on them. Faith really is the foundation for everything in life. It's what makes those moments a little bit easier, just like it makes so many other things easier. So you see, all you need to worry about on hills like this is the great ride that you're about to have. Don't worry about anything else. Trust in God. Know that Jesus is there for you and with you. Know that they'll both come through in like they've always done in the past. For everybody throughout the ages, they'll come through for you as well, because they both love you more than we can possibly imagine, and they both will always, always be faithful. That's what we can trust in. We can trust in it through faith. So, I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to get out and jump on this roller coaster. So. Before I do, I want to remind you, as we're going up those hills of life, don't worry, just pray. Trust God, trust Jesus, and know that everything's going to be okay. Let's pray. God, thank you that even though life does oftentimes have its ups and downs, when we hit those moments when the what-ifs are flooding through our minds and all we can feel to do in our hearts is to worry and our stomach is doing flip-flops and we feel like we want to give up remind us god that you are there with us that your son jesus is sitting right by us and holding on to us remind us that your love is always there that your faithfulness is something that we can count on that you will always come through for us just as you've always come through for us in the past. Remind us, God, when we want to worry, to instead pray to you, 
to tell you what we're going through, what we need from you. And then thank you, God, that you've promised to put your peace in our hearts. Help us to remember all the ways that you've come through for us in the past so that we can have faith in you going forward. Thank you, God, for faith. Thank you for all the ups and downs, because even in those moments that we may not want to happen, even when it's scary, we can know that you're with us all the way. And through it all, God, that we, we can trust that with you, this life that we're all on can really be the best ride of all when we're on it with you and with Jesus. So thank you. We love you. Bless us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. We're going to be back next week and throughout the summer. So I hope you'll plan on joining us. Once again, we get right back here. Maybe not up there. Not allowed to have cell phones on the rides. Remember that. Then they will stop it. Take them away from you. Enjoy the ride, whether you're Cedar Point or anything else you're doing in life. Just remember, don't worry. Pray to God. And then you will be happy because God will give you all you need. And that's a promise. Until next week, take care of yourselves. Remember how much God loves you and be blessed. Bye.